Welcome to FPP's Meet the Candidates. This Cable 10 series allows you, the voter, to hear directly from the candidates their views on the issues that are important to us. Leading up to the primary election on May 21st, today's guest is Will Rhodes, a candidate for Franklin County PVA, which is Property Evaluation Administrator, correct? That is correct, Steve. Well, thanks for stopping by to visit today, and could you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. First of all, thank you for having me. I've uh, uh, always watched the Meet the Candidates throughout the years, and uh, it's a little different being on this side of the, the lens, I guess. But uh, again, thanks for the plant board and, and Cable 10 for all they do for the community. Uh, as you said, my name is Will Rhodes. I'm born and raised here in Frankfurt, uh, attended Second Street School and Frankfurt High, and then attained a bachelor's degree from Kentucky State University. Uh, my wife, Sarah, works for the Frankfurt Independent School System uh, as a counselor, and then our uh, three children attend uh, Second Street as well. Got twin-year-old daughters in the third grade and a um, son in three-year-old preschool. So okay. That, also at Second Street? Also at Second Street, yeah. yeah. So keeping that tradition going. Um, like I said, growing up in South Frankfurt, I think, uh, uh, and parents working for state government uh, gives you a, a unique perspective so close to the capital. So kind of always been around that uh, public service yeah. our area. Right. So what do you like to do? What I like to do, well, uh, as I said, with the three kids, there's not much like to about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> kind of go where they they need you to be. Um, yep. Their girls are active in softball and uh, basketball. Son just started baseball as well. So yep. uh, dance, all that stuff. Oh, I remember top those of school days. stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, there's always something to be done. I think at least five nights of the week we've we've got cars going in different directions and, mm -hmm. and getting everybody where they need to be. Have so. you left anybody anywhere yet? What's that? Have you left any of them anywhere by accident yet? Not yet. Not yeah. yet. I, I, I did that one time at East Frankfurt Park. I uh, got a call. Christopher was ready to be picked up from baseball, and I was in Elizabethtown. So <laughs> that was a, a great scramble I'm for that. I'm sure our day will come. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So tell us about uh, what inspired you to run for PVA. I know that you're serving in the position now. but Correct. I was appointed by the governor, uh, Governor Bashir, after Kelly Lang's retirement in November, uh, November 20th, actually. So I've been there since then, about four months now. And that appointment will run through uh, January um, when these new elections take hold. So um, what, what kind of got me interested is... Um, I've always had a, a, a deep appreciation for public service. As I mm -hmm. said, both parents were in state government and um, I was just instilled at a very early age to be involved in your community and you have a responsibility to provide for your community. So uh, with that, after I graduated college, I started at the Department for Local Government, which is attached to the office of the governor and deals with local governments, not only through uh, grants and different stuff, kind of as a conduit through right. the state and the federal government. But um, on my side of things, it was more technical advisement. Um, uh, ended up, uh, before I took this appointment, I was executive director of financial management and administration at the department. And we took a look at more budgetary things, municipal finance. Uh, we're charged with um, approving all the budgets for 118 counties. Jefferson and Fayette were kind of their own animal. Right. But uh, we would advise counties through the uh, budget process anytime they're bringing money in, uh, where to kind of put that in the budget, and then oversight on those expenditures uh, as well. So that, um, you know, that led me uh, to dealing a lot with local governments, you know, with fiscal courts all throughout the state uh, from, you know, helping Hickman County with a project or bringing in FEMA money to repair right. stuff after tornado or all the way over into Boyd County dealing with different stuffs. And as, as most of our viewers know that, that there's a myriad of things and, and monies that come through our county governments. And, yeah. Um, with uh, the Department for Local Government, there was some oversight on that. So it's uh, it all just kind of uh, came together. You know, when I heard Kelly Lang was retiring, I first of all, thought good for her, you know, yeah. a, a well-spent career and deserved retirement. And, um, you know, I had a couple people reach out and say, have you, have you thought about that? I'm, no, I haven't thought about that at all. But the more right. I did think about it, uh, it really came to be a no-brainer. And I said, you know, I, I really enjoy serving um, – the public, and I've done that all over the state, 
And uh, I thought it would be really cool to, to do that at home, you know, right. kind of take that expertise and, and experience and be able to apply it and make a difference here in Franklin County. Well, and get off the road a little bit, I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. with the three kids, those uh, three and four night uh, road trips to Paducah or, or the Appalachian yeah. Mountains uh, yeah. kind, of, kind of way on the, on the better half. <laughs> they, 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 they do. So for people who don't know, could you tell us about the responsibilities of a PVA? Sure. The PVA's responsibilities are, are statutorily driven, um, actually rooted in our state constitution, uh, last ratified in 1891. So PVA's, and, and myself included, when you first hear of PVA, you think that's the person that comes and, and puts a value on your house. And, right. that is, and that is a large part of, of what the property valuation administrator does. But um, there's a lot more to it than that. You, yeah. you, you, all the values when you get those cards in the mail saying, uh, hey, your car tags do, those values are assigned by the PVA all throughout the state. And um, that's morally done through NADA. I think now it's called JD Power, which they assign the value, and then we'll kick it down. But also boats, trailers. Uh, there's been a new system, I think, anybody who's trying to renew their tags lately is, has dealt with called CAVIS. It got a... a update through the Department of Transportation for the first time, I think, in 35 years. Yeah. And there's been some snags with that. So we have people who are down in the clerk's office have an issue renewing their tags, and they have to come up and see the PVA, whether it was something that was junked years ago or somehow that new system caught it and it's back in their name, and, and we kind of alleviate that. So okay. it's a lot more than, you know, snapping the uh, uh, measuring tapes around houses and, and right. putting values on that. But it's been very enjoyable, I will say that. Again, getting back and, and, and being in Franklin County and focusing on helping uh, your hometown is, is special. Okay. Well, what is the biggest issue facing the PVA right now? And, you know, if elected, how will you address it? Well, the biggest issue, one of the biggest issues, I think, is, is uh, as we've all seen, our, our housing market is just exploding, right? Right. And, um, you know, you've, you've, how do you keep up with that? Obviously, when, when a, a transaction takes place, um, that kind of, the market sets itself, right? Yeah. But then you've also got uh, maybe the house two doors down. Somebody's been in there for 50 years, and so that assessment is is really out of whack, right? Yeah. Maybe a, a three, four hundred thousand dollar difference two right. four, two doors down. So, so how do you how do you go about that? Obviously, you don't want to go in and say, "Hey, kudos for you for owning your home for 25 years, but it's now worth yeah. 200 more." I mean, that, that, that's kind of a painful experience, right? So. Well, You've got to strike a balance, I think. Obviously, the market should regulate itself. But then again, going and looking at those those properties that maybe are a little out of whack as far as assessments. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you know, the, the property value is set by when you sell it. Right. But we all know that the property values are going up. Right. So, you know. How do you strike that balance? Well, again, the, the market should, should take care of itself. But then... I think you got to go through, um, uh, per the Constitution, yearly, you can, you can look at a property any time that needs assessment, right? Yeah. But what most counties do is, is split their county in a uh, quadrennial uh, format, and then once a year they'll go through that quadrant. Other, some other counties go, one year they'll do all residential, one year they'll do all farmland, one year do all commercial and industrial. I think Franklin County with 22,000 parcels mostly residential i don't think that format would work but you know you get out in the community and you see these new transactions and you see um stuff that gets out of whack from right. maybe a neighborhood hasn't been assessed um in a long time but yet houses are starting to sell and you see that that big discrepancy so well with my with my last name starting with a v i hope you do it alphabetically <laughs> so you get around to me um are there any uh, problems with staffing or budget? Well, no, the budget's fine. The PVA is is funded partially with, with like what they call local money, OX is what it's called. And that comes from uh, the county. That there's a formula with that, our population, number of parcels, value of those parcels. Um, there's a formula that the that statute sets out that the county has to pay the PVA office. And then the city... Uh, makes a payment for use of our tax rolls as well. 
but the bulk of our payment for staff is is ran out of the department for revenue. Okay. You know, and and my salary as well. So um, budget wise, we're not a fee office. We're not, you know, we don't really handle any money per se. So the the budget is is fairly sound. Last I looked at the legislator's budget, I think it, uh, the PVA's portion of that is is looking pretty good. Staffing, there's a great staff in place. Um, um, that are working really, really hard and, and really good at what they do. Uh, when Kelly left, I think before and maybe after, there was a departure of, of some individuals, three or four of them actually, that probably left with over 80 years combined service. So right. losing that institutional knowledge is always tough, but we've got a great group in there that's that's really grabbing the bull by the horns and, and doing an awesome job. I can't thank them enough. Okay. Well, so somebody, if you do go out and assess somebody's property and they, they think the assessment's too high, or mm-hmm. I guess they wouldn't complain if the assessment was too low. Um, <laughs> well, I guess they would if they're trying to sell it. Yeah, we've actually had somebody come in and say, hey, my house is at this. I've, I, I've got this much square footage. I've, I've done this addition or this and that. And, and they would ask for it to be increased and... Hey, yeah. okay. okay. But, but on the flip side of that, yeah. there are also people that, uh, you know, say, hey, this square footage doesn't exist. Uh, it might be, uh, you know, an erroneous uh, sketching done or something like that. Right. And, uh, you know, heck, Steve, there might be cases where somebody had a kitchen fire and they've had to take their kitchen down to the studs. And that's obviously going to yeah. reduce value. I mean, through the assessment process, we don't go in the home, right? Yeah. It's just all outside. So... If there is, you know, a mold issue or you had a water line break or stuff like that, for sure, come and come and let us know, and, and we'll definitely take that into account on the assessment. Right, and this is a, that would be a voluntary a voluntary reassessment where they ask for you to come and well, right. Well, it would come. Yes, it ask for us to come, and we've and we've taken pictures of fires and stuff like that. Somebody's called and say, hey, I've I've you know I've had a fire on the property and uh, do that but I think a lot of that would come if somebody got a reassessment and there was an increase yeah. they would they would come down and and contest that which is uh, obviously their right to do so have a conference with myself or staff we try to work it out if we can't there's a board of assessments that meets where I'm kind of removed from the process and they look at it and then uh, you know try to try to come to an agreement on a fair cash value okay um, are there any things that you have seen that you want to do to make things more efficient, or do you think they're going pretty well? Or? No, uh, there are things that I want to build upon. You know, Kelly Lang really did a good job bringing the office into the 21st century. Um, you know, I think most everybody knows now our website is free and open to the public. Um, it's one of only probably five in the state that yeah. is free. A lot of them require a subscription, and a lot of PVA offices do generate Forty to fifty thousand off those uh, subscriptions, but I'm I'm going to leave that free. I think it's a public service with public information that deserves you know that access to the public if they want to uh, want to have a look at their own home or are thinking of moving or anything like that. Or what's going on over there? Okay, it's public information. But what I do want to build upon, Steve, is um, you know technology's really taken off in every sector of our society and 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 appraisals and assessments are no different um i went to a class that um um offers a flyover service for our all the aerial mappings Mm -hmm. and it's it's a custom plane that comes in the county and just kind of mows the yard and it's got cameras that does that right and it gets a not only an aerial view but an oblique 45 degree angle view on all the parcels yeah which is really cool from a pva standpoint because with that in the program you're able to measure from that you're able to get a side view if there's a farm that's got a gate locked and we're not able to get back there and look at a barn or or something like that that aerial view can take care of it but it got me thinking i said wow this this technology could really be of of use to other agencies right right so you know, I talked to our sheriff. I talked to our uh, chief of police. Um, I said, told them about it. I said, well, what? Don't you think this will be of use to you guys? You know, mm-hmm. and, and they're like, oh my gosh, wow, yeah, they could, you know, in, in certain situations, see where they were going. In that training, they actually had a um, a county was using it for dispatch, and um, you know, with the aerial, was able to go dispatch on a, on a 
somewhat unnamed road and dispatch was able to to relay to the officers out in the field where somebody was in a wreck so my point being is Mm -hmm. is is this technology that i want to build upon is not only useful for the pva and us providing a better service but our fire ems uh, gis stuff with even the plant board yeah um, our school services mapping out bus routes And, and i think that uh, the symbiotic relationships are, are very good because the PVA office deals with the sheriffs. We assess the rate or assess the property. The county government, city governments assess the, the tax from that property. Yeah. The sheriff collects it, you know, where the clerk collects the motor vehicle, so on and so forth. So I think the more the more symbiotic relationships and, and more collaboration we can do as a city and county government, the better. Well, and that sounds like you're fairly transparent as well. So... Yeah, no, I, I no. That, that this is the people's office. Any information we've got is is theirs. I want to make that as easily accessible as possible. Yeah. Um, speaking as far as other technological advances, the clerk and I have a really great relationship, and um, we're actually working to get deeds online. So now you wouldn't have to go down to his office to poke around the deed room and get those big heavy books and yeah. and, and get them down and yeah. flip through the big huge pages that you would actually have a hyperlink on my website to um, to look at the deeds for each parcel. So again, just kind of making things more efficient, um, more transparent, as you said, yeah. and just, you know, it, it's for the people. You know, I, I was looking on our, uh, on our website and it's, uh, with the amount of hits it, te- it, it gets, the yeah. website, and you factor in that a citizen is going to have to leave wherever they are, come down there, deal with the staff, go back to what they were doing, right? Yep. So we're cutting all that out, yeah. leaving it free and open. And time is money, right? Yep. So they're leaving their work or whatever they like to do. Staff's got to deal with you, right? Yeah. If you average all that up, it's about $3.2 million in savings yeah. by keeping that website open. And I think with the deeds coming on there, that's only going to grow. Right. So we're excited. Um you know, with all this cool stuff's out there, why not use it? Why not implement it and just be free and open and, uh, you know, let everybody have a look at their public information. Well, that's great. Well, um, is there anything that, you know, you really would like to champion in, in the office or? Well, I think I just want to follow the guidelines set, set out by our forefathers, you know, under the constitution, um, Kentucky is a state that is supposed to be 100% fair value. Yep. And um, in my opinion, we've, we've had people not paying their fair share for a long time. Yep. And, uh, and I'm not talking about, you know, Jane and Dick down the street in Indian Hills. I'm talking about corporations and out-of-state owners of, of large commercial property and so forth that have kind of flown under the radar. And uh, as I spoke about that appeals process earlier, you know, if I bring them up to fair market value, they're going to send their attorneys in and this and that. And mm-hmm. I'm not afraid of their attorneys. I'm, you know, I, I'm here to do the job and do it under the letter of the law. Right. And uh, to me, Franklin County's worth fighting for. So that's what I'm here to do. Okay. Well, he told you you'd have a couple of minutes where you get to look right into the camera and ask people to vote for you and give them the information about how they can find out more about you and. It's your turn. All right, Steve. Thanks so much. Your uh, camera's that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Appreciate you again for having me and uh, everything the plant board does to uh, provide all their services to the community. As, as again, my name is Will Rhodes, and I'd humbly ask for your vote on May 21st. Uh, Franklin County has long been regarded throughout the state as one of the more educated and thoughtful and active voters. And uh, as you do go to make your decisions leading up to the elections in this May primary, I just want to have you ask yourself a couple questions. Are we tired of being the capital city that is constantly struggling to keep up with its neighbors? Are we tired of um, not having the amenities that we wish we did and uh, the services that we'd like to provide for our children and grandchildren to not only live here but then choose to live here after they go to college and want to come back? And if the answer to those questions are no, then I think your choice is clear. Um, I really appreciate your vote on May 21st, and I look forward to serving you. Thank you. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you. And, and how can people contact you? Do you have a 
Facebook page, website, anything yeah, like I've that? Yeah, I've got a Facebook page, but I, I like to talk to people face-to-face. Come on down to the PVA office and see us. Give us a call, email. Okay. Uh, all that's on our website, franklincountypva.com. We'll continue to be free and open. Uh, my email address is on there. Our phone number's on there. And, again, uh, come by and see us. If there's anything you feel like we should know about, we'd love to hear about it. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank you for coming by today, and I would like to thank our our viewers for watching, and I hope you've learned something uh, as you lead up to the uh, primary on May 21st. Thank you.